Chapter 13, Palma. Excerpt from the Citizens' Assembly on the Raising of Taxes on the Gridlock. Report number 103. Testimony from Randomly Selected Citizen, Dr. Kiera Patel. I defer to the experts. A few days later, after studying, Palma traipsed back home. He had a deadline from Esper to get them the info they needed, but the opportune time had not arrived. He was afraid that he was hesitating too much. That night, he endeavored he would push himself. As he walked across the penthouse's bridges, a flying shadow suddenly startled him. In the distance, a mech runner jumped from building to building, practicing their jet jumps. Palma squinted. It looked just like the training mech that Armin used. The surrounding people in the faux Rococo cafes on the bridges averted their gaze from the chit-chats to stare at what was likely Argent Winslow. Behind her came another mech chasing her. More people turned around, and Palma could hear someone ask, Is that her training partner? The other mech tried to keep up, vaulting across the skyscrapers, but suddenly flailed, barely catching the lip of the building in front of it. It scrambled up and then followed Argent down to the lower buildings. Palma shook his head in disbelief. It was wild enough that they could steer those machines, never mind jumping from skyscraper to skyscraper. The people went back to their drinks as Palma continued home. When he entered his parents' home, his dad stopped him. Why didn't you tell us? The worst thought immediately pierced through Palma's head. He was about to confess to helping Flora when he saw a letter on the dining room table. His dad let it float towards him, the letter doing a small jet jump of its own. You applied to a social club at the university and you didn't tell us? His dad asked, brimming proudly. Palma was relieved. Oh, yes, I wasn't sure I would get selected or anything. I didn't want to disappoint you, so I didn't tell. What does it say? It says here you're on the short list and have been invited to attend a dinner with the Borough Club. We must celebrate. Tinu said, raising his hands. Clara! Clara came over and from underneath the table whipped out a bottle of champagne. Surprise! Guys, no, Palma said, furrowing his brow. I'm not in the club yet. It's not that big of a deal to make the short list. No, we can celebrate now and we can celebrate later when you are selected, Tinu said as he popped the bottle while Palma reluctantly dropped his bag. As it fell to the floor, so did the penny drop in his mind. He saw the opportunity. His parents rarely drank, and now the bottle of champagne was out. Okay, fine, Palma said, turning to an accepting smile. If they got drunk, he could safely sneak around when they slept off their stupor. Pour it up. They cheered, and his father came in for a hug, rubbing Palma's bowl-cut hair. Palma returned the favor, hugging his father. To our future mayor! Whoa, Dad, no. (laughs) To maybe getting into a social club. Palma said, smiling back. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. It really means a lot. It really did mean a lot to Palma. As an only child, his parents were more than just family. They praised every achievement, no matter how small. Despite being an adult now, it still made him feel content. This made it even harder to fly into the headwinds against them. The evening progressed with the Emmer family doing what they did best over the years talking politics, talking life, and watching science documentaries together. After a few glasses of champagne, the couch would partly swallow Palma, caressing him with nostalgia. In younger years, it was a similar feeling, except the champagne would be replaced with hot chocolate and a pillow fort. He could see his parents on the aging side also relax into their chairs. His mother had let her usually tight ponytail relax, They definitely seemed content, despite their troubles. Palma took a tired, deep breath. Now was the time. Last one? Palma asked. Oh, no, thanks, Tinu responded. In that moment, Palma struggled. The closest person to his family was Flora, and he wanted to help. Pushing his parents into a corner wasn't something that came easy. If there's one thing his parents taught him, it was to follow through on your commitments. Despite it making him feel uneasy, he continued. Oh, come on, just one more, Dad. Pour one out for me, Clara responded. Okay, last one, Tinu said, taking off his glasses and rubbing his eyes. A few minutes later, while watching a documentary about the airplanes that used to fly in the world, his parents finally got up. 
Clara came over, almost missing, and kissed Palma on his forehead. They stumbled their way to their bedroom. Palma headed to his own, also stumbling, and tucked himself into his bed. From where he lay, looking out the window of their apartment into the sky, he would sometimes imagine that they were flying. It was only sky, nothing else. His dad first showed him that when he was a toddler. Look out there, son. Look at the clouds inching by. We're flying. One day the planes will come flying back. He also thought about Flora. She was likely somewhere down below in her bus planning to go to sleep. As kids, they would pretend to fly through the streets. He reached over to his phone and stared at the light enveloping him. He took a deep breath and texted Saga. Okay, I can be ready in five men. Are you ready? The city was silent. The stars blurred through his window. His phone buzzed. Ready when you are. Palma got up, rubbed his face, and slowly traipsed to his bedroom door. He listened. Nothing. He continued sneaking towards the study, towards his parents' computers. He opened a laptop lid, and it prompted for biometrics or a password. He knew what it was. Three days earlier, he steered the conversation to a funny internet video at dinner and grabbed his mother's laptop, asking for her password. Just theft. Okay, I'm in. Great. Now go to the email client. Is it the Mech Institute emails? There should be an option to dump all the logs. Through the bright screen glare, Palma found the emails and dumped it. It is Mech Institute emails, quite a lot. Great, send it to me. He peered back towards the door, waiting to hear something. Nothing came. So he continued. Palma sent the files. Adrenaline rushed to his head. Or maybe it was the alcohol. Thanks. Give me a few minutes. Stay online. The moments felt like hours. Everything felt loud, including his memories. Displayed on the desk were pictures of his youth with his extended family. It made him almost shush his usually loud cousins in the pictures. He poked around the laptop and saw that a document was open. It seemed to be an in-progress report for the Citizens' Assembly on raising the tax rates on the gridlock. Palma frowned for a moment. He thought his mother would not file a report. His phone buzzed. I'll need more time to process all these logs to see if I can find a way to get in. Not much I can do now. One last thing before you leave. Install this daemon script for me. I'm sending it over. Palma received the file and executed it. Nothing happened. That's exactly what needs to happen. Will allow me to monitor and hunt around the computer for more information. I'm sure this will be enough for now. I should be able to get in within a day or two. Go to sleep. Boom. Thanks. An uneasy silence followed. It was like the feeling of a plane as it descended onto the runway to land, losing its speed, its descent growing more volatile, creating stomach-churning moments of suspension in the air. He was helping Flora and merely hoped that this hack wouldn't cause any more harm. He took a deep breath, but heard a door jolt open. It was like the feeling of a plane screeching to a lurching halt on the tarmac. He turned around to see his mother standing at the door.